Welcome back everyone. I hope you're doing amazing. I'm going to be sharing how you can get started making your own skincare products. I'm going to be sharing some of my tips, my tricks, um, resources that have helped me along the way. Um, there's so much that goes into making your own skincare products, but you need to have a very strong foundation to help you get started. So I'm going to be sharing as much as I can in this video. So let's get started. If this is your first time stopping by, my name is Esther and I make DIY hair and skincare videos and I sell my products on my website as well as um, I also have online formulating classes. Everything I mentioned will be linked in the description box. So let's jump right in. So to get started making your own skincare products, um, I have a list of tools and equipment that I recommend you get, um, but I don't want you stressing yourself out if you're not able to get everything, um, but I just have a general list that I recommend um, at least trying to get most of the items. Um, but at the very minimum, since you are formulating, to be as precise as possible, you need a digital scale. You need a digital weighing scale. I like the ones that are the precision scales that round out to 0.01 grams or 0.1 grams. If you prefer to work in ounces, that is fine as well. Uh, but at the very minimum, you will need a digital scale. So that way you can weigh all your ingredients as accurately as possible. You also need heat safe jars. The Pyrex jars are okay as well. Just anything that's able to withstand heat. Um, I like the beakers. Um, these tend to be very um, sturdy, but the Pyrex jugs will also work. Um, things like your spatulas, your stirring rods, um, pipettes make formulating much, much easier. Um, in the beginning, when I started formulating, I used to use spatulas that had um, wooden handles. I would stay away from those because over time the wood um, starts to eat away with continuous washing so with spatulas I would say stick with your stainless steel spatulas your glass uh, stirring rods things like that um, if you plan on making emulsion so things like a lotion cream you will need a stick blender this is a uh, immersion blender you need this to make your lotions and creams but if you don't plan on making any lotions creams um, emulsions then you don't have to worry about purchasing a stick blender um, you will need a temperature gun for uh, checking the heat and the temperature um, but that's not a must i didn't have that my first maybe year of formulating um, i started out with ph strips but they are not the most accurate but they do a decent job the most accurate would be your pH meter. That's to check the pH of your formulations, your water-based products. The pH meter is going to give an accurate, precise reading, but you don't have to get that right away. You can stick with the pH strips. They're just not as accurate. And lastly, I, I would recommend you get your disinfecting wipes, your isopropyl alcohol, especially the 70% isopropyl alcohol, um, to wipe down your surfaces, spray down your surfaces, spray down your tools. Um, your Lysol wipes are good. You can also use a bleach solution, like a 10% bleach solution. But at the very minimum, this is what I would recommend you get, you have on hand to get started making your own skincare products. Before you can formulate a skincare product, you need to understand the skin type you are wanting to formulate for. So any of these categories for skin types, you want to truly understand what makes a good product for that skin type. If you're formulating for oily skin, it's going to be different from formulating for someone with sensitive skin or um, combination skin, um, normal skin, because the ingredients will vary. Um, so I always say get a clear understanding first of the skin type. 
I know everyone wants to formulate, you want to jump right in, but study and research the skin type you're formulating for because that's truly going to make or break your product at the end of the day. So once you understand the skin type, you understand the ingredients that that particular skin type likes, then you can choose the right ingredients for your skincare product. So for my example here, for sensitive skin, you want to choose soothing and non-irritating ingredients, uh, things like chamomile, oats, aloe vera, and of course, I would say fragrance-free um, uh, products. So you don't want to use uh, things with fragrance that can irritate sensitive skin. Oily skin in ingredients can be things like willow bark extract, witch hazel, things that are good for calming um, inflammation and irritation on the skin. So here are some helpful um, resources. I always suggest you do a Google search and just pull up um, dermatology blogs because they always have a lot of information about different skin types, ingredients. Um, so that's very helpful. And uh, formulating blogs, Humble Bee and Me is an amazing formulating blog. Um, it's free, but she also offers a Patreon that you can check out. Um, but her formulating um, blog is amazing. If you go on Google, just type Humble Bee and Me and it's going to pull up. Swift Craft Monkey blog is hands down one of the best formulating blogs. It's not free. Um, there are different um, levels. You can check that out. Everything will be linked in the description box. Um, you can also join formulating groups on Facebook. Many of them, I believe, are free. Um, but you can also buy formulating books. Uh, I, I'll leave my um, a link for Institute of Personal Care Science. They have several books as well as their online formulating school. But their formulating books are really, really good. And they also have a lot of free formulas, recipes on their site. And their YouTube channel also has a lot of formulating resources as well. Um, formulating classes, school if you can afford that that's good um, supplier blogs also a lot of suppliers have formulating um, a formulating section with a lot of free formulas you can access um, so do your own research there's a lot of free information online you don't have to spend a lot of money especially if you don't have a lot of money um, but you can still get started formulating your own skincare. Take advantage of the free numerous formulating resources online. I'll link as many of them um, as I can in the description box. So check the description box for the links for the formulating blogs. So I wanted to just show you what I meant by doing a Google search. If you open up your Google browser, just type something like best ingredients for maybe oily skin and it's going to pop, um, pop up with a lot of information. So you just have to look through and I always like um, articles from sites like WebMD, um, things that have to do with skin health. So I open up WebMD and I'm going to look at the skincare ingredients. Um, that they recommend for oily skin. So that's how I do my research. So whenever I want to formulate something, maybe I haven't formulated before or an ingredient I haven't worked with, let me say something like retinol. Um, this is how I do my own research. I'll go on Google first and foremost and study as much as I can. And then you just um, gather all the information that you've studied and then just make your own decision about the ingredients you ultimately want to work with. So Google is your best friend for a lot of things you're looking to find, but there's also a bunch of crappy information. So you want to be selective when choosing your information. So this is how I do it by doing a Google search and just typing the information I'm looking for. Moving on to the usage rate. You need to know this when you're making your skincare product. Um, this is the amount percentage of an ingredient to use when formulating a product. So um, I always say try to purchase your uh, cosmetic ingredients from good suppliers because they will usually have the usage rate amount on their website. So it already takes the guesswork. You don't have to guess at how much of an ingredient to use. So buy from a good supplier because it will have this information on the website. You need to know this amount. Um, so if I go to a supplier website like Lotion Crafter, 
um, they usually have all that information. Let's just say I want to formulate with um, DL Panthenol and I've never used this ingredient before, never heard of this ingredient. In their info page on this ingredient, it's going to have the details, um, what this ingredient is, how it can be used for the skin, for the hair. It has the inky name. It tells you the recommended usage, which is one to 5%. So if you're new to formulating, you've never made anything, you need to check out sites like this because it makes formulating less uh, scary, so to speak, because all that information is already provided for you. Next is a cosmetic formula. You need this to create your products as it forms the foundation. Um, it's the percentage list of ingredients that's required to create a product and it always adds up to a hundred percent. So I don't want you getting overwhelmed about oh, one more thing I have to learn. This is the main thing you have to learn to create your own skincare products. Um, but I'll link, um, I think I have two helpful videos I can link that shows you step by step how to create your cosmetic formula. But this is tied to the usage rate percent. So you need to understand that as well. Um, here's an example of what a formula looks like. In case you've never seen one, this is just a breakdown of what uh, my emulsified herbal body butter formula looks like. So this is how your formula should look. Um, but websites like Wholesale Supplies Plus is very helpful. Um, they have a section for skincare, um, formulas, recipes. Um, it's under their menu section. Just um, go over their resources and you're going to find that they're getting started and recipes. They have a ton of um, recipes on there. Um, but I always say before you make any skincare formula that you see someone else make or you see online, make sure you understand what the cosmetic formula is because I can't tell you how many messages I get daily from people asking how much of this ingredient should I use? How can I do this? How much of this to use or how it's just you have to have an understanding. That's why I'm taking the time to explain this. If you don't understand what goes into a formula, meaning like the ingredients, usage rates, you're going to have a very hard time. Um, but another website is Lotion Crafter. They also have a section with a ton of formulas. So when you have some time, check out those two websites. It's very beginner friendly and very helpful uh, for formulating your own skincare. Next are uh, common ingredient categories. Um, take note of the categories. There are several of them. Um, this is going to be a helpful guideline for you when you start to study um, about these categories. If you check out, uh, for example, Humble Bee and Me, a lot of these categories uh, can be found there. So do your research about these categories. But any product you want to formulate will always have several of these categories um, in the product. Um, so when you're coming up with your cosmetic formula, this is also going to be a guideline. So take note of these categories. They're, like I said, the most common in, um, ingredient categories. Um, so let's just say um, I want to create a facial cleanser, face wash. That's going to be a cleansing product. So there are several categories that, will, that are standard in a facial cleanser. So surfactants are the cleansing ingredient. You need distilled water to dilute the surfactant. You need something to be hydrating for the skin. That's a humectant. Um, a thickener is going to improve the viscosity of the product. And then a preservative is going to prevent your finished product from growing bacteria, yeast, and mold. So that's why if you understand the ingredient categories, the different ones that are available, it makes formulating so much easier. But if you don't educate yourself or learn, then it's very hard to formulate and come up with a product. So definitely study the different categories that I just listed. So for some basic formulating rules, we are formulating and we are measuring by weight not volume so that's why we're using the scale so volume is more like 
you're using something like two cups of maybe water four tablespoons of maybe flour or sugar but by weight that's why you are using the digital scale so that's what the formulating is going to be based on by the weight and take note of common cosmetic terms um, like emulsion and hydrous oxidation rancidity preservative solvent humectant surfactant viscosity ph these are the most common cosmetic terms um, i'm not going to go over each one if not this video is going to be two hours long keep in mind that specific ingredients go into formulating skincare products so like your toners lotions creams cleansers serums body butter products anything you want to formulate any skincare product there's always going to be specific ingredients so everything ties together so from knowing the skin type you're formulating for will will this will inform the ingredients you choose and then knowing the ingredient categories you can build your cosmetic formula so everything is linked there's not just one answer or one way to formulate a skincare product so many things go into building a good product building a good cosmetic formula and that way you end up with a stable product at the end of the day next is preservatives um, you need to understand when to use one for your formula um, you need one if you are going to be formulating a water-based product or a product that will come in contact with water. Um, you need this to stop the growth of bacteria, yeast and mold in your formula. And you need to understand the usage rate. This is so important. I sometimes see mistakes being made with preservatives, but just think about it like any other cosmetic ingredient. It has its own usage rate. It has the formulating guidelines. Um, you just want to make sure you're purchasing from good suppliers. Um, but I don't want to make this video um, overwhelming for someone that's never formulated. So um, I will leave helpful links in the description box um, about preservatives. I have two preservative videos I've done already. I think I have three at this point. So I'll link everything in the description box. So check that because it's going to have a lot of information um, but just keep in mind that anytime you are making a product that contains water you need a preservative face wash a serum that contains water toners um, sugar scrubs that have high likelihood of coming in contact with water in the shower you need a preservative you need to understand when to add to your formula um, choose the right one if you need a water-based one oil-based one please don't formulate a product without understanding when to use a preservative do the necessary research it is very extensive it's a very extensive topic um, don't be in a rush to make a water-based product if you don't understand preservatives um, there's no rush <laughs> take all the time you need to learn this um, but like I said, all the resources will be linked in the description box um, to help you out. When I first started, I was overwhelmed about preservatives. If I knew all the stuff I know now, <laughs> if I knew it then, I would have saved myself a lot of stress. So please take the time to check the description box. I'm not being paid by the formulators or the blogs or the people that run the blogs. This is just helpful resources that I've used. A lot of the resources there have purchased their own books and ebooks. Um, I don't get a commission, so just check them out and I'm sure you'll find it very helpful. I'm going to talk briefly about good manufacturing practice, GMP. So for cosmetic businesses or even businesses as a whole, manufacturing businesses, you usually have a set of good manufacturing practices that you follow. So it's a set of uh, very detailed guidelines that help um, cosmetic businesses to consistently manufacture products that are safe and of high quality. Um, this is very important because it's going to help minimize the risk of contamination and cross-contamination of your products. Um, so you're going to have this system in place. If you're a business owner, you are going to have a a system that you follow um, guidelines that you follow 
um, you have those set in, in place so that way you you don't have any issues with your manufacturing because you're following the same processes every time um, so let's just say something as simple as protective wear what is your uh, business guideline for that do you if you have employees do they wear a hairnet do they wear masks gloves so that's, those, are, those are the kind of things GMP looks at. Um, so examples would be like your quality control, um, contamination of equipment and tools, ingredient labeling, um, inspection for your expired ingredients, um, protective wear like I, t I mentioned. What is What are your guidelines? Especially if you're running a business, you need to have this in place. Every cosmetic ingredient that you're using to to make a product are they all properly labeled with the expiration date so that way you're not using expired ingredients when you are making your product uh, manufacturing your products even if you're doing it from home what is your guideline for cleaning your area getting your area sanitized um, all those are guidelines and all part of your good manufacturing practice um, so you need to have that in place if you want to make your products, especially if you are planning on selling these products to uh, customers, to consumers. And lastly, I will just talk briefly about suppliers. Once again, remember to choose reputable suppliers when buying your cosmetic ingredients. Good suppliers will have detailed information about the ingredients, correct usage rate and more listed on their website. Um, don't purchase an ingredient from a supplier who doesn't provide any of that information about um, ingredient use or the details of that ingredient. I will list the two uh, suppliers I mentioned in this video, Lotion Crafter and Wholesale Supplies Plus. Um, but I know it's a lot of information I shared, but I hope you found this information helpful, useful. If you would like to see more of this type of videos, let me know in the comments um, so I can work on videos like this, um, helpful videos like this. Um, but please don't forget to um, like this video. And um, if you haven't yet subscribed, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions about this video, definitely leave them for me in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. But until then, thanks so much for watching. Stay blessed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. i